Another option you can do is transcoding. If you're going to be using a lot of files or you don't have an extremely high-end machine you're working off of, I recommend creating proxy media, which are lower quality versions of all the media and files you're working with, which enables Final Cut Pro to work faster without using as much CPU power. And later on, you can switch to your original media when you want to export, so you're not losing any quality. But creating proxy media makes it faster and easier to work. Whenever I'm doing a project that has a lot of files, I almost always create proxy media. These are some other options you can use that I don't typically use too often, but it really depends on what you're doing with your project, such as you can analyze for balance color. Funka Pro's built-in color balance option can be a little clunky. It really depends on the footage you're using. I've seen it look really good at times, and then at other times I've seen it make things kind of pink and weird. If you think it looks better and it helps you during color correction, then check it. Otherwise, don't bother. For every one of these options you have checked, it's going to take a lot longer to import your footage. But depending on what you're doing and the footage you're working with and what you're aiming to do with your project, it can be worth it for you because you won't have to do it later. Another option is to find people. Final Cut Pro has a way of detecting faces in footage, so it can detect that and then it will organize things. If you have this checked, you can consolidate or create smart collections which will create collections in your event that are labeled one person, two people, three people, etc. So it makes it easier to find your shots that have people in them. Another thing is to analyze and fix audio problems. I've never really encountered a situation in which I needed to do that. You can separate mono into stereo channels and group stereo audio. For this, I'm going to check create proxy media, but again, it's not necessary. It's just something that I recommend doing because it'll make your work faster. It makes a difference, it really does. When you're working with your original 1080p high-res media, it really eats up a lot of CPU power, especially if you're creating projects that use hundreds and hundreds of clips like we're typically doing. If you don't create proxy media, it's just going to absolutely destroy your system and be a huge bitch to deal with. You also don't have to create an event beforehand. If you want, you can just go straight to import footage and then create an event this way, and you can select which drive you would like it to be on. When you're ready, simply click import. Now what you're going to notice is this little circle here starts spinning a lot. Now what this is is the background tasks window which I'm pretty much addicted to looking at and it can tell you a lot of useful information based on what Final Cut Pro is actually doing. For example it shows that transcoding and analysis is happening so you can see it's analyzing all the footage that I've imported and transcoding it and it gives you a percentage of how far along it is. You can also see if you're importing media sometimes if it's odd file formats, this will take a long time. There are some other options here as well. For example, it'll show you when it's rendering. Whenever you import an MP3 file or other audio file, it has to generate waveforms, which takes some time. But this will show you information about everything that's going on and exactly how far along it is, which is really convenient because it's something Final Cut Pro 7 doesn't have. Whenever Final Cut Pro is doing something, you often wouldn't be sure exactly what it's doing and why it's eating up power. This will show you exactly what's going on and you can pause it or stop it. So that is pretty much all it really takes to import your footage. There's more complex options and other things you can do, but chances are if you're just starting out, this is really all you need to know. In the next tutorial, I will go into more detail on exactly how to organize things. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it helped a bit with understanding Final Cut Pro X. And if you have any more questions or comments, feel free to leave them on the YouTube page.